This video is all about the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, and how the technology found in the Canon EOS R3 might percolate its way down. Will the R6 Mark II be a Mini R3 like the R6 was a Mini 1DX Mark III? Details coming up, but first, I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. Before the Canon mirrorless transition started, I used to reference Keith Cooper's Canon camera timeline over at Northlight Images. It's an excellent leading indicator of when to expect a refresh of your favorite Canon camera. But as Keith said to me yesterday, ah, uh, the mirrorless transition. It's thrown all the usual lifetime estimates into turmoil. The Canon R6 Mark II wasn't on anyone's radar until at least Canon Rumors posted this story with leaked specifications on the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. And then of course, this one, which came a day later. Canon Rumors stated that the specs for the R6 Mark II have been validated from multiple known sources, giving it the coveted CR3. I followed up with each post with my own analysis and opinion, but these stories left us with several questions. The first and most obvious is, when are we gonna see the Canon EOS R6 Mark II? Which leads us to the next obvious question, will we see the Canon EOS R5 Mark II alongside the Canon EOS R6 Mark II? And of course next, how much technology can we expect from the Canon EOS R3 to show up in the Canon EOS R6 Mark II? Keith Cooper's been following Canon's release of DSLR cameras since the year 2000. This chart has proven to be an accurate leading indicator of when we can expect to see new Canon cameras. At the top of the chart, we see the one series and we see that camera being refreshed anywhere from two to four years. Then we go down a little bit and notice the absence of a three series. We go right to a five series, the 5D in 2006, followed by the 5D Mark II in 2009. So we had a three year wait there, then another three year wait for the 5D Mark III, but we had to wait a staggering five years for the 5D Mark IV. And then of course we had to wait for the mirrorless successor to the 5D Mark IV, the Canon EOS R5. So when we're looking at the high-end cameras, including the 6D, we can see that generally you're gonna be waiting around three to four years for a refresh. However, as we dip down to more affordable cameras like the 50D, 60D, and 70D, generally these cameras are getting refreshed around two to three years. And if we look at the mid-level, the 400D, the 450, the 500, these are getting refreshed almost every year, if not every two years. So for the high-end camera, most often we're waiting somewhere between three to four years for a successor, and for more affordable cameras, more popular cameras, we're seeing that wait time of one to two years. So it's easy to sum up this chart into really two observations. High-end cameras generally have a refresh of around three to four years, whereas low-end, more consumer, affordable cameras generally have a wait time of around one to two years. I know what you're thinking. So what? Canon's done investing in DSLR technology. They're committed to mirrorless. They've committed to the R system. And you're right. The purpose of this chart is to show you how consistent Canon is in a stable market. When sales were not falling off a cliff, there were no supply issues, and competition was just Nikon, and phones were, well, just phones. Canon began their mirrorless full-frame system in late 2018 with a Canon EOS R, and that debuted the RF mount. Keith began monitoring the release of Canon mirrorless cameras, looking for patterns. There's not a lot of data to really go on, the R6 Mark II is the first real R system camera rumored to get a successor. Going back to that DSLR chart, we can see that the 5 series, starting with the 5D, got a refresh every three to four years. That tells us that we really shouldn't expect to see the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the successor to the ever popular Canon EOS R5, a camera that's selling very, very well today. We shouldn't see it any earlier than 2023. And when I say 2023, I'm talking about the middle of the year. And on the high side, we can probably expect, and most realistically, we can expect to see the Canon EOS R5 probably debut sometime around July of 2024. But that doesn't really help us with the Canon EOS R6. It's a new product segment for Canon. And if we look at that DSLR chart, there really isn't any natural carryover from the DSLR period. A longtime trusted source told me this. I think the segment in which the Canon EOS R6 Mark II sits requires a shorter product life cycle. It's a pretty competitive space. And speaking specifically to the Canon R5, he said there won't be a Canon R5 Mark II 
alongside or coming soon after the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. These cameras weren't originally going to be announced together, but they seem to be attached at the hip. The R5C already solves the perceived problems with the Canon EOS R5, and the R6 Mark II should do the same for the R6 issues. And if you didn't like the Canon EOS R5C, firmware 1.6 solves a lot of the overheating issues in video, specifically 8K RAW, 8K oversample 4K, and 4K60. In these two videos that I put out last week, talking about the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, I said that while we've got some really good leaked specifications on this camera, there's nothing about date. And generally when it comes to a fall announcement, they usually happen around the second week of September, all the way up until the end of October. And then, and only then, do the really brave or foolish attempt to release a camera in November in December, competing against multiple holidays worldwide long, hoping for the best. Here's what Keith at Northlight Images thought. I wasn't expecting the R6 Mark II this year. But, but seriously, with October almost over, I wouldn't expect to see any announcement from Canon on the EOS R6 this month, and I don't expect them to do anything in November or December. January? February? That's another story. It is possible we could get an announcement of the Canon EOS R6 around CP Plus leading up to April. It's certainly a very popular time for cameras. Last year, we had two Micro Four Thirds cameras, the OM1, and of course, the much anticipated GH6. Having a good image processor is like having one really great shoe. No matter how good it looks on you, it doesn't work well without a matching shoe. The same goes for a great image processor like the Digic X. Without a good sensor to pair it up against, are you willing to shell out hard-earned cash? Is Canon planning to use the R3 sensor in the Canon EOS R6? My trusted source tells me by adopting the R3 stacked BSI sensor, they also don't have to produce an old sensor anymore and can scale up the 24 megapixel stack sensor production, which is better for the bottom line, I imagine. But Keith Cooper says in reference to the R6 Mark II, I'm curious just to see how much of a step up it is and what aspects of the R3 technology make it into the camera. So here we are. Without any facts and just rumors, it leaves us to postulate, to wonder if Canon is going to take that same BSI stack sensor from the Canon EOS R3, a $6,000 camera, and put it in a camera that, for all intents and purposes, right now is around $2,500? No, that's just absolutely ludicrous. I mean, it's not like Canon ever took the image processor out of the 1DX Mark III and put it in the R5 and then the R6, followed by the R3, and of course, then all the way down to the R7 and the R10. When the R6 first came out, a lot of people referred to this camera as a Mini 1DX Mark III, not for its video capabilities, but for its stills capabilities. 20 frames per second electronic, 20 megapixels. It was very good in low light. It had very good dynamic range for portraits, for fashion, for anything in a low light situation, nightclubs, weddings. It was a very good camera. So why not? Why not have a Mini R3? Why not the R6 Mark II? fixes all the video issues that we had in the R6, then gives us a mini R3. I agree with my sources. Taking the R3 sensor and putting it in the R6 makes a lot of sense in terms of return on investment and reducing costs, and Canon has to work on just one 24 megapixel sensor instead of two. That will save them some money. And it's not like Canon's gonna give the R6 Mark II all the same video and stills capabilities as the R3, just like the R6 didn't get all the stills and video capabilities of the 1DX Mark III. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And if you want to know the latest rumored specifications for the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, well, I published these two videos just, well, a couple of days ago. I guess it's a week ago now. Time's moving so quickly. And as far as the Canon EOS R5 Mark II leak specifications, we don't have anything on that yet. We don't even have any conjecture. Uh, let's just stick to the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. As soon as I hear anything about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the R1, or anything else coming out on the Sony A7R5, which is due to be announced October the 26th at 3 p.m. London time or 10 a.m. New York and Toronto time. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, go ahead and click that subscribe button, followed by clicking all notifications. By clicking all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified by YouTube so you can stay up to date 
on the latest camera news and rumors. That way you don't have to spend all your valuable time tracking down Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, all your popular websites, YouTube sites. You can just come here, subscribe, choose all notifications, so you can stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors. I cover all the major brands and all the major news. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.